Uh, we ran out of space on the camera, so I'm going to splice these two videos together. I can't remember what I was just talking about. But um, using the leash can help the dog feel a little bit. It's almost like uh, uh, training wheels on a bike when we're learning the bike. There's some confidence that comes with that. It gives us a little protection for her. I think uh, for dogs that are psychologically disturbed or, or insecure, um, it gives them a little bit more. That's great. Um, leaning on my, on my hand. Um, but it gives them uh, more ability to give up because they understand the human has more control with the leash. We don't want to pull her around. Oh, that's I think what I was talking about. So to get her off the couch, I would pull a little bit. As soon as she took a step, I would relax the leash. And I, it took a uh, rocking back and forth. It's about as you literally rock and get some momentum going. But eventually she got to the edge and then she jumped off on her own. When she jumps off, that would be another command. I would pet her and say the word off. So that becomes another command word. Uh, let me see, now the Guardian has a, uh, a dog kennel, a plastic one, under his desk at work, and she goes with him to work. He's taking the top off, but she still likes going in the kennel. She has a kennel in the bedroom that she sleeps in here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the, uh, the bedding out of the kennel, the little dog bed out of the kennel at the office, order another one that's exactly the same one. So take the new one to the office and put that back in the kennel. And then uh, and take uh, the one from the office, actually I have something else I'm gonna talk about the office in a sec. But I take the one from the office, bring it home, and we'll, uh, for the bedroom up here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close uh, the door to the kennel. We're gonna leave the kennel where it is. Make sure we do this when she's not in the room. So we kind of close the door, come in, to put the new dog bed right in front of that kennel, right in front of the wire part where she walks in and out. And then leave the dog uh, door closed, uh, or the kennel door closed. So then at night, that night, she goes over, she can't get in her kennel, but there's familiarity. It smells, I've slept on this many times at the office, so she'll park herself there. Once she gets comfortable enough with that, and she's going over in the laying down right away, she's not whimpering or pawing at the kennel, what I would do at that point is I would take the kennel away, put it in the closet, again, without her being around it, and move that dog bed where the kennel was, in the same exact spot. And then basically, she should go into, onto that dog bed. Now we can do things to make it a little bit more of a positive association by leaving like a bully stick or a really high value meat treat there on the dog bed so she creates even more positive association. And again, I would give each dog bed its own designation. Um, and then eventually we could start moving that dog bed to whatever part of the, uh, the room we want to put it. Uh, now in the office, I would prefer not having her, it's okay for her to recuse herself into those little cubbies at times, but she's spending probably too much time there at this point. She's now six months old. So at the office, what I'd like to do is, once we have the new one there, we're gonna leave it in there in that kennel for a couple days to get some good smells in it so it's familiar. And then what I would do is one day, uh, maybe have uh, somebody, a staffer, take the, the bedding out of the kennel, take the kennel away from under the desk and put just the bedding down there on the floor by itself. Mm -hmm. Now she's still under the desk and it's in, and enclosed, so she'll feel comfortable and she'll probably just still go there because there's no better place for her to be there. Once it, she's had about a week of that, she's nice and comfortable, then each day I'd like to make move it one inch closer to the corner away from the desk, out in the open. So it's still behind the desk area, it's away from the door, it's away from the seats, but it's eventually gonna be open. But we wanna do it an inch at a time. If we move it there, she might not go there, she might just stay in the same place under the, under the desk. So we wanna get her progressively, gradually going over there, maybe an inch a day, or if an inch is too much, it might be a half an inch. Might be a very slow process, but eventually, and it'll be in your way at some point, but eventually we'll get her there and then she's more comfortable being out in the open. Um, let's see, what else? Um, we want, I'd like to have the guardian uh, uh, inviting some friends over. Um, we need her to get a lot of variety. A lot of people say, well, we have kids that come over, we have this person, that person. Different people, different energies is really gonna be important for her. So this is a great excuse to go through your social Rolodex and people that you haven't seen in a while, get a nice bottle of wine, invite them over for a meal, get more people coming over. If we can, I'd like to see if we can do that like once a day um, so that we get different people that are coming over and different experiences at both houses. Now the other house is a little bit more active, it sounds like, than this house. And so I, when, I think when, oh, I saw a little something go by the door, it's, I thought it was a mouse, it was, they're sweeping. Um, but at this house, she has tendency to move and recuse herself in the cubby of the, uh, of the couch, where the other house, she wants to go to the male guardian because I think that he leaves her alone and at the other house, the kids are trying to pet her and engage with her. So the kids would be well served to try to breadcrumb her and get her to come to them and not try to pet and show that they love her by petting her and giving her affection. I think it's just overwhelming for her. Now, once she can come consistently on the couch with, without the breadcrumbing, 
Then the nice thing to do would be to have everybody sitting on the floor. And have everybody sitting about seven feet apart, at least three people here. And then we hold out the treat and say the word come. And if she doesn't come and make a kissing sound like I usually get a dog to look at you. Once it looks at you, start lowering your hand. Go all the way to the floor if you have to. When I start doing this, I want my forearm parallel to the floor. I don't want to hold it up here or down here because if she, if I make, if she, I say come and she doesn't come and I make the kissing sound, she looks at me and I start lowering it. The lower I go, the more enticing it gets for the dog. Now, first, we might have to just even breadcrumb her when we go to the floor. We might have to put them on the floor and get her to come closer and closer to us. But this is the power of positive dog training is letting the dog do it at her own time. Um, as long as she's not completely shut down, we, we would force the issue a little bit if that was the case because we have to get her moving forward. But the idea is we want her to associate coming towards a new uh, human is something beneficial, it's good, it's rewarding, it's safe, and it's something that I'm rewarded for doing. And so the, uh, the more that we do that, the more she feels comfortable coming to us, the more confidence she has with us, the better she'll feel about it. Insecure dogs and dogs that are like this that usually have low or insecu uh, high insecurity. Um, teaching them more commands will help. Now, first, we're going to use passive training just to reward her for things that she does on her own. But if she happens to do things that's kind of unusual, like she stretches, maybe we pet her for, and say stretch, even though, or she yawns. Um, even though those aren't necessarily commands or tricks, it's still another thing that we can do to get her to do and reward her for doing, which will be a boost for her self-esteem. Grabbing the collar can be hard for some dogs, because um, a lot of times, especially abused dogs, may grab the collar and pull them around, or grab the collar and abuse them. We did something like that. So for some dogs, that becomes a negative association. So if you give a treat, touch the collar. Treat, touch the collar. And even if it's just doing it with pieces of kibble, should take this? Nope. So we want to keep track of how much kibble we're giving her, because we'll get to a point where there's just going to be not any greater returns. Now, one of the things that I did, I had a, a, a teacup poodle that I had to rehabilitate, and it was very insecure, didn't like looking at people in the faces. For dogs, looking at us in the face can be a challenge. So what I did, I'm going to try to manipulate her a little bit like that. Yes, I know, I know. So what I did is I put her on my chest like this. Got her to relax. I'm not pushing her down. I'm just kind of holding her in this position. So I might take a little bit of relaxing. I might have to use a leash and just get her used to it while we're watching TV, just getting her used to it. And what I did was basically when I fed her, um, I would hold up the treat. And sometimes you might have to use a higher value food item to do this, at least initially. So what I did for her is I used shredded chicken. And so, and I microwaved it a little bit so it had a nice aroma. And there were little, you know, kind of strips, almost like spaghetti noodles. And so what I would do is I would have her looking at me. And at first I just let her take the treat. She wasn't looking at me, she was just looking at the treat. She had a low head. Then after a while, what I started doing is I start raising each one up a little bit more until eventually she's looking at me in the face as I'm giving her the food. Now when she does look at us, one nice beneficial thing we can do is smile. Dogs actually can read a facial expression. So if she looks up at us and we give her a nice smile, a nice positive look, that can help her feel more comfortable and more confident as well. Um, let me see. Um, I'm trying to think the other things we went over. Um, for, you know, eventually I'd like her to have some rules and some structure like um, sitting before we let her out a door, having her come out the door after us, um, things along those lines. But right now, we just want to build up her self-esteem and confidence. Um, now, she gets groomed. Does she like her groomer? She tolerates it. Okay. Grooming is a very stressful situation for a lot of dogs. And a lot of groomers are paid hourly, and their boss is like, get them through, get them through. And then, so they're a lot, you know, it's very invasive. They're very grabby. So for her, um, what we might want to do, I've had one client and she gave me this idea. What she did is she just, uh, she told the groomer, she goes, you know what, I want to pay for two grooms. And she goes, I want you to spend twice as long with my dog. And I want you to be giving it kibble and little pieces of shredded chicken or whatever we have to do as an incentive and go a lot slower. So I give you a little bit of chicken. While you're doing the chicken, I might cut a little bit here. A little bit more chicken, cut a little bit here. So we make it a longer process, the groomer is getting paid twice as much so they're happy to do it, but now we create more of a positive. Groomers are one of the most bit in, uh, uh, jobs that you can have because the dogs are stressed out, there are other dogs in the room that are barking, it's an, an, a new environment, there's clippers, there's all these things that are going on, it's really stressful. Um, another thing you can do if your groomer is nearby is take her to your groomer and just sit in the lobby if you can or just sit there and give her, and give her a meal. Just feed her some high value stuff. So she just gets used to, again, a positive association at the groomer. 
All right, uh, Lily, am I forgetting anything? Oh, I'm gonna try one other thing. Uh, I'm gonna try to play with her with a laser. I'm gonna try to engage with her, uh, her, per, you know, her prey drive. Now they don't have, uh, all dogs have a prey drive, but these guys don't, uh, probably not as much as some other dogs. But if she likes to chase the laser, that's a good way to, you know, get her going around, uh, moving about. And that's one thing, I can't remember if I went over this in the, uh, in the video before getting interrupted, but the more exercise and, and activities we can get her doing in, without crossing her threshold, the more we're gonna, metabolism is gonna be waking up, her blood flow, you know, her routine. We wanna do as much of those things that are get her going as possible to get her, and, and especially things that she enjoys. So take note of anything that she seems to enjoy, we wanna come back to that and incorporate a game by that. That's one of the things I remembered I wanted to go over, um, set games. So right now, she's, you see she's turning away from me, she's a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, she's relaxed, she's tolerating me petting her, but she probably would be like to be on her own. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we can do is scent games is the high value tricky trainers that I have have a strong smell. Let's say that there is a corner here or a couch or a chair, maybe like this one. What I would do is, is take the tricky trainer and draw like a chalk outline on this side of the couch and then another one here and then put the treat over here around beyond the dog's line of sight and lead her, and just put her down right where the, trail, tree, uh, the scent trail starts. She sniffs it, her nose leads her forward, she gets around the corner, she turns, she follows, there's a, there's a treat there. And then she goes and gets the treat. You could say a reward or something, so you give her a positive association with that as well. But eventually we get to the point where we play a game where we play hide and seek for the treats. And like, you, you know, if she's outside and you go to a certain area and you hide three or four treats and then, you, you know, like, where are the treats? Or, you know, uh, hunt, or come up with a one word command. Every time she finds the treat, say the word hunt when she touches it with her lips. So when you come in, you have a game that you can do with her. Um, something else you might want to try with her is uh, some uh, interactive uh, feeding toys. Uh, I have a, uh, a post on Quest Ed, which is the puppy training part of my website, um, doggoneproblems.com slash quest. Here's the art. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and what I did when I fed him is I had a treat ball, and I filled the kibble up in there. Now we might do this with the tricky trainers, which are higher value. And then what he had to do is nudge it with his nose just to the right amount so one of the pieces of kibble came out and they would eat it off the floor. Well, he had to work for his food. That might be, a, might, be, might be a good thing for her to do because it gets her interacting with toys, it gets her moving forward, and she's earning her food, which will help her feel better about it. Uh, one of her guardians mentioned she likes cream cheese. Um, I would like to see if she likes peanut butter. If she does, we could use a little bit of peanut butter as incentive, get a calm. Now, at first, maybe we just put a little bit of peanut butter in with her bowl and get her to create a, a, an appetite for that. Yeah. But then we put in a little calm and give her the calm and let her chew on it. Now, a little trick is you can take one of the tricky trainer livers and put that in the calm first. There's a little hole on, on the yeah. uh, opposite we end. We have one, actually. That's where you put the, the liver treat so it smells like liver, but it's the rest of it's packed with peanut butter. So she's got to lick through that peanut butter to get to that training treat. And also when dogs kill something, they don't eat the whole animal typically. They tear a little hole in the side and they pull pieces of the flesh out. Mm -hmm. The calm kind of satiates that primal desire. Mm -hmm. And that gives her something to do as well. It's, even though she's just sitting there, but she's working at it. So that'd be a good thing to have at the office as well and give mm -hmm. her something to do. Um, also marrow bones are really good things for that as well. So uh, marrow bone, like a half inch marrow bone, I like going to the green spot, but good pet stores will have these. They'll be frozen. You have to give, give it a little bit of time for the marrow to unfreeze, but don't keep on refreezing it. Let her get it all out. And for her, we want a, maybe a half inch or an inch marrow bone. And that, you know, you can maybe, I've seen some people drill a hole through the marrow, tie a string or a zip tie, and then zip it into an area where it's out in the open. So she wants to go and take the a bone and go off by herself. And that's not a healthy thing to do either. So if we have a bully stick or something, maybe we poke a hole through it or drill a hole through it and tie some, uh, some uh, twine to it and attach it somewhere. So you can chew on this really tasty thing, but you can only do it out in the open and near the humans. Um, all right, um, Lily, you're such a sweetheart. Little white dog did you right, didn't they? We, it's one of our favorite rescues in Omaha. All right, well, this is Lily's roadmap to success. Her guardians may have some questions afterwards. She may need a follow-up session. We'll see how it goes for the next month, and hopefully we'll see her come more and more out of her shell. If not, then we might need to, need to set up a follow-up session, work on some other stuff, but we'll hope that we don't need to do that. Uh, I want the guardians to call me or text me if they have questions. I would rather you call or text me too much than not enough, especially for a dog like this. I'd rather you start things off on the right foot rather than the other one. All right, Lily. 
You didn't like that. Well, like, do I need to brush my teeth? Is that what you're saying? All right, this is Lily's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you meet it.